Voting for HIP 42 is open and has begun. This HIP may turn out to have the most significant impact on minor earnings than any other previous HIP, especially on miners and hotspots that are earning significant amounts of HNT. This is a vote to gauge the interest in this HIP from the community and can ultimately lead to being implemented on the network if voting goes well and it leads to an official vote. This HIP is rather technical and is intended to target gamers who often collect all or most of their earnings on witnesses, meanwhile offering zero beacons to the network. This HIP proposes a witness beacon ratio that will decentivize those types of setups, ultimately eliminating the reward for gaming the network in that way. But this could also impact real miners who have optimized their setups to witness thousands of other hotspots. There's a lot to unpack here with this HIP and temperature check vote. Let's take a look at some of the details in today's video. <music> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the Crypto Compound channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're having a great day. Please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on the way in. It is the best way to support the channel and I really, really appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be looking at HIP 42. The voting is currently open. It is a technical HIP and it is a temperature check vote. This vote is to gauge the interest from the community regarding this HIP if we are in favor or are against this HIP. There is a lot to unpack here. It has implications for everybody. It is designed specifically to target one type of of spoofing on the network or gaming of the network that goes on. However, it can severely impact some miners that have very high witness numbers. And those kinds of miners are basically miners that have optimized their setups to be able to witness so many witnesses. Now, of course, there are some measures in this HIP to try not to decentivize those types of setups because, of course, if you are truly providing great coverage, you should be con further incentivized rather than disincentivized on the network, in my opinion. However, there is a lot going on with regards to this HIP that will impact so many miners. We have to really try and figure out if this will really hurt the gamers or will it hurt the gamers just as much as it will hurt really good coverage providers from real miners on the network. Now guys, before we jump in, I do wanna take a quick look at the charts. Of course, we had a really brutal drawdown yesterday. We dipped below $30. We are recovering slightly here. However, we have experienced a somewhat of a death cross here with the 50 EMA overtaking the 200 EMA. That is not a good sign. As you can see from the last time this happened back here, we did not retake that level until the end of December, and now we have given it back, the 50 EMA losing momentum against the 200. Hopefully this, this cross does not last nearly as long as this one did. We really, really want to see this get back above the 200 EMA and regain positive momentum, so keep an eye out for that. Now, if we take a look here at the voting page, we can see this is a technical HIP. It is a temperature check. There is nothing that can happen from this HIP other than a true decision to be made whether this goes to a real vote. So this is a temperature check. However, this is a good gauge of how the community feels towards something like this, which is designed to be anti-gaming. However, it could have implications that affect every single hotspot owner across the world, even if you are providing legitimate coverage. Now, if we see here, this proposal seeks to regulate the number of witnesses a hotspot is rewarded for based on the success of its beacons. By tying the reward for witnesses of hotspots to success successful beacons, we incentivize healthy network coverage. Votes for this HIP are considered a temperature check. The implementation of this HIP is not guaranteed and is subject to follow-up votes. Now, I think it is interesting here because in this second sentence, he says, by tying rewards for witness witnesses of hotspots to successful beacons, we incentivize healthy network coverage. Now, of course, there's nothing I want more than people providing copious amounts of healthy network coverage and there being no gaming. I'm totally in agreement there. However, I have not fully decided how I feel about this HIP in general because as far as my understanding goes, it is possible for certain hotspots that have been optimized at extremely high elevations with really clear lines of sight to have significantly more witnesses than beacons on their hotspot. And I don't think it is fair to disincentivize those types of people. And 
to me right now, that's what it sounds like this hip will ultimately end up doing, even though that might not be the intention. That is why I'm so concerned and why I think this is such a hugely important vote for the community. Of course, as I mentioned, I have not finalized my decision on how I'm feeling about this. I do have to do a little bit more research, really look at how the technicals will affect certain hotspots, but we do have some time. There's approximately four days remaining. This right now is just to go over the big picture of this hip and how I am feeling about it right now. Of course, down below, we could see the pre preliminary results is about 65% are in favor of, of this beacon witness ratio. And keep in mind, this hip is originally intended to battle gaming, which I am, of course, 100% in favor of. I think it's just important to consider the repercussions of a change such as this. Now, if we go here to the more details page, I'll put a link to all of these pages that we go through in the video down below. But if we go to this link, we will be brought to the GitHub page where it is really outlined here. Guys, I do want to say that Anthony RA is the author of this hip. He is doing this. He, no one is paying. He is not part of the Helium team. No one is paying him to do this. We should really be thankful for these people that are contributing their time and energy and resources to trying to make the network better. Kudos to him. That is an unbelievable thing that he has put this together. He must have spent insane amounts of his own personal time to put all of this together, and it is super well thought out. So huge thanks to him for doing that. A lot of these people have specialties that are not common, so it, we're very lucky to have them participating in trying to make the Helium network better. Now, of course, here, motivation to ensure that hotspot owners are motivated to not just prioritize witnessing, but also to beacon. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the main ways that people are successful at gaming the network right now, ultimately they end up just duplicating witnesses over and over and over and over again and never beaconing. So this is intended to disincentivize those types of gamers and of course, if there is a proper beacon to witness ratio, those people will be disincentivized. And hopefully if there's no incentive, they will disappear. That is the goal. However, further implications for other market participants are the concern. Summary, this proposal intends to enforce a hard limit on the number of witness receipts a hotspot is capable of claiming based on how well the hotspot is able to perform all functions related to proof of coverage. So it's basically saying we don't just want them to be witnessing a million hotspots. We want them to be participating in the beaconing, the witnessing all the different pieces to the proof of coverage function on the network. The two major components of proof of coverage is the hotspot's ability to beacon and witness. Beaking is a mechanism used by the blockchain to determine if a hotspot has the capability to perform downlinks and also provides a means to determine coverage without the need for devices. That, of course, I agree with everything there. And I do believe that it is fair to expect a fully functional proof of coverage system working on miners. However, we have to consider the implications that something like this might cause, of course, Fully functional proof of coverage on every miner is should be the desire. However, maybe this isn't the right way to be doing it. Let's continue forward. The primary function of this proposal is to tie beacons to witness receipts to ensure that setups benefit the network and not just the individual hotspot. Now, this is an interesting sentence here. And if we really pick it apart, it might almost contradict parts of why the Helium network works so well. They are saying that the benefits from these hotspots should benefit the network and not just the individual hotspot owner. However, perhaps the mechanism and the function should work in a way in which the individual is incentivized to provide a certain type of coverage and that coverage is the one that benefits the network the best. Rather than the function being set up to, to benefit the network and having the individual being benefited as a byproduct of that. There is a slight difference between those two things, and I think that that might be one of the reasons why this might not be the best solution. However, I haven't decided how I feel about this just yet. A secondary function of this proposal is to combat the most recent gaming associated to the following proof of coverage discussion on Discord. Of course, this all came about because of a proof of coverage discussion, which revolved around some type of gaming in which the witnesses far exceeded the beacons. Now, stakeholders, of course, all hotspots who currently get rewarded more for witnessing than they do for beacons, which could be every legitimate hotspot owner on the network. Now, here's some more technical stuff. Of course, here it says basics. However, it does get a little bit technical. I'll try and cover the key points here to try and make it as clear as possible. Now, he is saying, in theory, there should ultimately be a four beacon cap per hotspot per day 
but that's not guaranteed. He is saying this in theory, and it's based on some sort of IP bloom filter that is part of the chain variable. He says the theoretical cap on beacons per day is based on the number of blocks produced per day and the value of the chain variable as of the writing of today or yesterday, that's four per day. Now there is a good point here that I like a lot. And he says, however, with recent network growth and overall setup quality of miners, this can lead to very unfavorable averages for beacons and witnesses. This can be amplified if the operator of the miners aren't motivated to fix these setups simply because they earn enough as is by simply witnessing nearby hotspots. So of course, what he's getting at is that there might be a better way of incentivizing people further to actually make their hotspots set up correctly, which I totally, totally agree with. Now, down here, he explains how the the limit cap is calculated. He goes on to say, with the current max witness per beacon of 18 and four beacons a day for five days, the theoretical max for your hotspot witness list would be 360. Now, of course, the network is not performing at 100% where every bit, every beacon has a one-to-one -one witness ratio. So of course, right now there is a compensation factor that he has in here that he says could be adjusted based on how the network is performing, which is interesting. Uh, that is nice to see that it is flexible a little bit. And of course, we do want the network to ultimately be 100% in a perfect world. However, we're not there just yet. Now, of course, one of the concerns is a brand new hotspot, which has zero witnesses. He goes on to say there could be a fix implemented here for that. And alternatively, set a minimum other than zero for the daily limit. Currently, 24 is the value that is proposed for that. Now, of course, there are down below some rationale and alternatives down here, which are rather interesting. This is another way of trying to link witnesses and beacons together to try and optimize the network. So it's interesting to see that there is an alternative right here on the HIP page. Of course, there are some concerns that are listed here uh, that have to do with beacon, with hotspots not beaconing for greater than 24 hours. And of course, some unresolved questions. Should hotspots be rewarded for simply being in a good location where they have the ability to hear hundreds, if not thousands of other hotspots? Now, if you ask me personally, I think that it is fair as long as somebody is not gaming the network, if they are providing genuine coverage, real coverage from a miner that they took the time to set up and optimize, uh, and they are able to hear hundreds or thousands of hotspots, I do personally believe that they should be rewarded for that on the network, because of course that is providing better coverage. Now, of course, with that being said, the question is, is that the type of coverage the network wants? That is really what my decision regarding this hip is coming down to. Should this hip be delayed until light hotspots are released is another question. Would this result in more adverse results than what the network stands to get as a result? That is a huge question. I think that is the most important question here is will this cause more problems problems for real miners, then it will actually hurt gamers on the network. That is a huge question we all have to ask before we do this vote. Now here guys in the discord, there is a hip 42 beacon witness ratio witness reward limit thread. I encourage you to come in here. There's a huge amount of valuable information, people trying to understand what this hit means. I'm still trying to understand exactly what it means and what implications it will have. I'll put a link down below, but check this out as well. Guys. Now guys, there is so much to unpack with this hip. I am not voting just yet. I'm still going to do a little bit more research, read around more in the Discord, try and figure it out. I will let you guys know how I'm feeling about it, but I hope this was a good overview. At least if you didn't know that there was a vote going on, you know there's a vote going on now, and this is a critical hip that everybody should vote on. Every vote that comes up here really should be voted on if you are a hotspot owner or a member of this community. But guys, that is all the information I have for today's video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching until the end. If you liked this video and you found it useful, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps support the channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, but just like that, this video is over and I'll see you next time.